Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get a hit with the truth. So today we are doing the, we're finishing up the fantasy heavyweight tournament rankings as we are going to look at my number 32 heavyweight, the former multiple time world title challenger, big time Jamil McLean. As we close out this, uh, the rankings talking about each fighter that's in the tournament before getting into the rules and regulations and then the first round of the tournament, the matchups. Um, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So we're gonna, as I said, we're about to get to the first round. This is the final video breaking down all fighters in the tournament. Big time Jamil McCline. Um, is the only guy that on this list that cannot call himself a champion. But why did I put him in here? Well, it's because he came so utterly close multiple times and I just and his size and skill um I just decided to put him in um for, you know, just to see because he had more opportunities and was floating around the title and came close to winning the world title multiple times and fought pretty much all the best fighters, to be honest. So um, let's take a look at Jamil McLean's career in the 2000s. He actually uh, started his career back in 1995. He lost um, two of his first five fights uh, and then um, also um, fought to a draw in one of those first five fights. So a slow start. But then he went on a big winning streak all the way till 2000 when he had a split draw with a guy named Ron Guerrero. Then got a win, then had a majority draw with a guy named Sherman Williams. Then he turned it on and won seven straight fights. And the three big ones all in a row were against Michael Grant, who at the time had only lost to Lennox Lewis. Um, a year prior in 2000, he ran into... into um, McLean and McLean stopped Michael Grant in the first round of their fight. That really turned some heads. Then he took on contender Lance Whitaker and, and got a convincing 12 round unanimous decision. And then in 2002, in April 2002, he took on former lineal champion Shannon Briggs and dominated Briggs, putting him down and scored a convincing 12 round or 10 round unanimous decision. This made him the WBO's number one ranked contender. And in December of 2002, he got his opportunity against Dr. Steel Hammer Vladimir Klitschko in what would be Klitschko's biggest fight to date. Many people were looking forward to it because it was the a matchup of the two biggest heavyweights of all time squaring off for a world title at that time. But this fight would be a bust. McLean would go in there and wouldn't attack Klitschko at all, and Klitschko hesitated on attacking as well, just peppering. McLean with with a jab uh, almost the entire fight finally in the 10th round he landed a big uh, he landed a, a left hook combination that put McLean down and McLean didn't seem keen on on getting back up and the fight was stopped Klitschko would win by 10th round TKO in a lackluster performance um, so McLean what I wouldn't say was written off but a lot of people were, you know, questioning his heart after that. He bounced back and got three consecutive wins, beating uh, Charles Shuford, an undefeated Cedric Boswell, and um, and uh, another guy named Wayne Llewellyn. Um, that all led to another crack at a world title as he would take on Chris Bird in November of 2004 for the IBF Heavyweight Championship of the World. And this would be a good one right here between the two. They would go back and forth. I think he scored a knockdown on Bird early in the fight. Bird bounced back, though, and closed the fight strong. It was very close between the two. It went to the scorecards, and Bird would take a split decision, and McLean would fail a second time at a world title, but had really proven himself as a legitimate contender. But he bounced back from that in April of 05 and took on undefeated contender Calvin Brock and lost the unanimous decision in that fight. He would get a win um, four months later, but then lost again in 2005 to Zori Lawrence by a unanimous decision. 
So things were not looking good at that time for McCline. But then he would go out and win six straight fights, not really beating anybody big, but would come out and win six straight convincing fights. That led to a his third crack at a heavyweight title when he would battle Nikolay Valu of the Russian Giant. Now this was truly a battle and still stands of the two biggest heavyweights of all time getting in the ring. Um, but he the fight was over before it would get started. He would injure his knee um, in the third round of the fight and would not be able to really do anything. The fight was stopped due to a knee injury and Nikolay Valuev would retain the title on a TKO in the third round. Tough, tough, uh, you know, turn of events for him. He returned nine months later in October of uh, 07 to battle Samuel Peter for the vacant WBC interim title that would have led, that actually he would have been upgraded to full champion, or no, he would have got a title shot another title shot with a victory. He knocked Peter down three times, and a lot of, and there was a lot of people that thought he might have won the fight, but it was a very kind of slow-paced, ugly fight where he seemed to run out of gas in the second half and wasn't too keen on attacking after the knockdowns earlier in the fight. And Peter just seemed to outwork him, but it was close, and he would drop a 12-round unanimous decision to Peter for the interim WBC title. Um, he returned five months later to battle John Ruiz in a contender's bout, but would lose that fight as well. I think that might have been for the interim WBA bout. I can't remember. Um, he would return with a win um, in 2008, um, you know, later in 2008. But then in 2009, he would battle Chris Ariola and get knocked out in the fourth round. And after that, it was just mostly losses for him. Um, you know, he finally finished his career in 2012 off back-to-back -back losses and uh, losing five of his last eight when uh, a guy named Magomed Absu something love um, knocked him out in the second round of, of their fight. So, Jamil McCline, you know, c call him what you want. He got three opportunities, almost four, basically. And you can argue that he beat Sam Peter. You can argue that he beat Chris Bird. But he fought pretty much the best fighters. He fought Vladimir Klitschko, Chris Bird, John Ruiz. Pretty much he fought a who's who of heavyweights for that time period and was there for, you know, was there as a serious contender for the better part of like eight years. And you really got to hand it to Jamil McCline uh, for his um, longevity and always kind of being there and being willing to fight whoever. So I like Jamil McCline. I'm glad I made him my number 32 because really no other fighter outside of like Fresa Kendo got as many opportunities, but he also beat a couple legitimate guys and particularly one champion on this list. He got he got a win over Shannon Briggs, um, you know, before Briggs became the WBO champ, but, but also when he was the, um, the interim champion, I mean, the uh, lineal champ, he beat him after the lineal, uh, you know, a couple years later after Lennox Lewis beat him. And he has wins over Michael Grant and a couple other guys. So I'm comfortable putting him in this spot because he was a serious contender and almost a champion on a couple of occasions. And um, yeah, I like him as my number 32 fighter. So that's it. That is the close and the final um, fighter, number 32 for my fantasy heavyweight rankings. Big time Jamil McCline, the multiple time world title challenger. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, Smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.